Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got five cool knives that you can check out right now. I'm gonna be linking everything right down in the description so that you can go and check this stuff out for yourself if you want to. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you're new, this is a great way to get exposed to some cool things that are out there. None of this is categorized in any specific way. It's just things that I think are interesting. So if you're new, stuff to check out. If you uh, are aware of this stuff already, these things I think deserve a second look. So let's go ahead and get into it. First off, a big old boy. This is the Tucson TS390. Now, normally, I don't, I'm not super ultra interested in a lot of stuff that Tucson does, but this is just really cool. Look at this edge. <laughs> it's almost 90 degrees. We're looking at titanium and D2 here, but the thing does not come in all that expensive for titanium. This is, of course, not made in the United States. Uh, but we're looking at about $119. Still expensive to a lot of people, but if you're looking for a big, heavy hitter, uh, made out of titanium with some good flipping action. Really, really high quality all the way around, and it's got a really, really unique looking edge. Uh, the TS390 is really cool. This designer here has done some really interesting things here lately in the knife world, and uh, this is uh, one to take a look at. You do get a full 3D mill titanium pocket clip. You get a steel lock bar insert. Nice action, everything like that. It really... It kind of looks like something out of a Final Fantasy game, right? I mean, it's 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 really cool and it's and it's functional. Uh, you can use the edge as a scraper tip. I mean, it doesn't really have much of a puncture tip. You can definitely use it as a scraper, you know, chisel something like that, and then save this edge for cutting. I still wouldn't use a knife as a pry bar, but once you buy it, I guess it's yours, right? So do with the do with it what you're gonna do. Moving on here, I think this is one that some people are aware of. If you're new, this is definitely one to check out, and that's the Civivi Altus Button Lock. This is on the smaller side. A lot of the button locks out there that are, um, you know, higher quality in the budget uh, realm because this is still a budget knife coming in something around 70 bucks. Um, a lot of them have flipper tabs. This guy does not have a flipper tab. So if that bothers you and you'd rather have a thumb stud opener, this is your guy. The other thing that I really like is the finish on the blade. This to me looks like glass blasting and I really, really like it. We definitely have uh, a good steel for this territory. I don't know if you can see it. It's Nitro V, which is great for this uh, general price range. In this case, we have G10 with steel liners. This is just an excellent day-to-day -day button lock knife that will not break the bank, right? I mean, a lot of new people are used to spending $20 on a pocket knife at a gas station. You definitely, there's definitely better stuff out there that can be purchased for a little bit more money, and this is one of those things. So if you're gonna graduate into the next tier, the Civivi Altus is a great way to go. Moving on here, another knife from Civivi that I just recently handled for the first time, that's gonna be the Civivi Brazen. In this case, we have the Damascus variant, which is gonna be a little bit more. This exact knife that you're looking at here is gonna come in at something like $85, but they make a version of this that is D2 and G10 for about 50 bucks. And truthfully, the D2 is going to perform better. It just depends, like, do you want the cool Damascus look or do you wanna go with the one that's a little bit better performing? Action is great. This thing is very nearly completely and totally false shut. Totally manual, right? If you're new, these are not assisted knives. These are manual. It's just the detent and then the release force. This has thumb studs and a flipper tab. And the thumb studs, man the thumb studs manage to not be completely and totally in the cutting path. This is a Tanto. This guy does come in a drop point configuration. It's a nice full size knife. It's really just a straightforward Civivi knife. I mean, something that we've seen many, many, many times. It just works really well. You can get a nice full size, very capable, very inexpensive Civivi knife. It's got a nice thin edge, nice puncture tip. If you want to go a little bit more in the strength side, uh, go with the Tanto. You want something that's going to, you know, a little bit uh, slicier. A little bit easier to maintain, go with the drop point configuration. These are really, really cool, right? Just kind of depends on what you want to do. Uh, I like everything about this knife except for the pocket clip, but that's a complaint that I generally have with most of EV knives. This is still an excellent choice at 50 bucks. Not much to complain about here. Moving on, a knife that uh, pretty much everybody knows about, right? And everybody was complaining, oh, we don't have them, we can't buy them, uh, right? Ah, uh, the Demco AD 20.5. If you're new to this knife, this is the only outside of the true USA Demco AD 20. This is the only knife in the world utilizing 
the shark lock, which is this little trigger guy back here. This thing makes deployment and lockout absolutely ridiculously easy and convenient. Probably the most fidgety knife out there. Makes this cool click, 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 right? We are looking at injection mold plastic and OS 10A. So nothing spectacular on the materials, but that is an old, tired, dead thing that people talk about. It's entirely up to you if that's something that you care about. I've been using this knife a lot. I have had no issue whatsoever with the OS 10A. I honestly don't understand <laughs> why it's such a problem for some. I think a lot of people just, you know, it, it's like when they look at a steel grade, they have this, this automatic ranking system, you know, in their head, right? They have, you know, lower end, they have bottom of the barrel, they've got mid range, they got high end and they got ultra premium, right? And then they automatically sort things into certain territories, regardless of what they cost to make or what their general performance range is. Austin A is not going to perform like CPM 20 CV, S90 V, right? All of those crazy, super high M4, you know, uh, K390, all those incredible high edge retention steels. But it's fine on this guy. This has really been great. Nice and easy to touch up. Um, they are expensive. These are manufactured in Taiwan, not China. So given that we are looking at a little bit more of a complicated build and manufacturing in a country that is nowhere near as inexpensive as China, it's still going to be a fairly high price tag at 150 bucks. You can get these in so many different colors right now. You can get an all black, black and orange. You can get the standard one. You can get the OD green one at DLT. I'll link as many of them as I can. There's lots of customization options out there. These are readily available, right? So uh, if you have not experienced this thing yet, this is one of my favorite knives to EDC. As somebody who regularly carries knives that are literally 10 times more expensive than this, <laughs> I really, really love carrying the 8020. It is so, un uh, the 8020.5, it is so unbelievably, ridiculously easy to manipulate. It just makes a wonderful tool. And then moving on here, I think this is kind of an unsung hero and definitely an underrated knife right now, and that's going to be the Kaiser Tauser K. I just really like how this thing is shaped, this deep choil in here for your index finger and kind of the downward curvature of the sheep's foot blade. I know every time I try to categorize a blade, I get somebody going, technically, technically, that's not a... Oh, please, please don't. Please, I'm gonna call, the, as soon as I start getting corrected, I'm gonna start calling these things absolutely ridiculous non-blade shaped things just to make it more confusing. <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, uh, this is an awesome blade shape. I kind of like the, uh, this is why I like this. For those of you who do maybe do a little bit of food prep here and there with your knife, the edge of this blade back here by the sharpening toy will actually lay flat on a surface, meaning you can get a full sort of whatever you, whatever you call that, like a rock chop. Um, yeah, you can do that. You you actually can. This is kind of a great, like, just like a pocket knife to have with you in the kitchen, or if you're doing maybe some, uh, you know, grilling or outdoor cooking or something like that, or you're camping, this really will work. I also love that they've got the jimping right here, keeping your, it's not really a choil area, but it gives you a nice amount of friction so you don't accidentally run your finger up on the blade. So it's running on bearings and is ridiculously, ridiculously smooth. The handle material is rich light, which is very similar to my Carta, but it's definitely not the same thing. Fortunately, it's incredibly durable, won't expand or contract, uh, it really won't be affected by anything, and it's not an expensive material. This entire knife is incredibly easy to manipulate and has wonderful materials. Did you guys see the blade steel? 154 cm. How much is that knife? It's like 60 bucks. <laughs> It's like one of the cheapest size. This thing is so unbelievably underrated. Um, yeah, get this thing while you can. I think this is just kind of a, just kind of a silly goose of a knife. Like it's obvious. This this knife is obviously incredible, and people just overlook it. Uh, incredibly easy to manipulate, right? Incredibly smooth. Blade shape is ridiculously utilitarian. Nice and ergonomic. The pocket clip is good. This is a wonderful, wonderful knife at 60, what is it, 60, 65 bucks, something like that. Kaiser Tauser K, wow. Might be one of the most underrated knives that I have experienced in quite a while. 
I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. I'll lay all these back out and remind you that uh, there are links for each of these right down in the description so that you can go and check them out. Um, once again, if you're new and you like stuff like this, this series has been well liked by you guys. This series is doing really great. I put them in a playlist, my five cool knives playlist, so you can check that stuff out. If you'd like, if you just want to get some quick exposure while you're there, you can check out my other playlists for more in-depth reviews, uh, unboxings, discussion topics, things like that, all things pocket knives. And if you like what you see, subscribe. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, like I said, I've got lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.